So you have a great idea for a product. It's revolutionary. It's a must have, and it's a project you need to bring to life. So how do you build it? Unless you plan to handcraft every product, your next step is to perfect the design and then find a manufacturer to mass produce it for you. But even when you find that manufacturing partner, you still might want to hold your breath because all it takes is one bad shipment for you to be out of cash, out of product, and back at the drawing board. My older brother was just like, sell what you have and get a real job. It had a lot of get a real job type of statements. The major setback was this receiving product that I couldn't sell. And it did set us back three years, ultimately. That's Robert Patton, an army veteran who was the founder of Sheath Underwear. He has faced one manufacturing misstep after another. And while each stumble was tough to swallow, financially and personally, he's persevered through the hard times, learned from failure, perfected his process, and built a business that is growing every day. There are always exciting things happening in the world of small business. The news that grabs the headlines, though, are always the highlights, the overnight successes, the billion-dollar IPOs, the massive exits. But just like your Instagram feed, that's never the whole story. Let's look deeper than the headlines and the press photos. Underneath all of that is the real work building something valuable and lasting. Don't get me wrong, I love crazy success stories and can be drawn into those big flashy tales just as much as the next person. But we all know that what's more important than the destination is how you get there. It's the struggles you have to overcome and the insights you learn along the way that make you who you are. So those are the stories we're telling. It's raw, it's honest, and maybe it's exactly what you need to hear. I'm Hillary Georgie. And this is The Journey. Growing up, Robert dreamed of becoming a professional basketball player. He imagined rushing up and down the court side by side with his favorite players. I really just fell in love with the game. I was very average at best, I would say. So I was always fighting really hard to keep up, which made it a challenge. I got cut from my seventh grade team. And my mom said, you can't even make the middle school basketball team, how are you going to make it to the NBA? And I remember that moment very clearly at the dinner table, which just pushed me that much harder. She knew what she was doing, but later would go on to make the freshman basketball team, which was a huge accomplishment. Spoiler alert, Robert didn't end up going pro, but he did learn valuable and lasting lessons from those experiences in his youth. He was drawn to challenges and to competition, and he began to understand the role that having the right mindset played in achieving success. After high school, Robert went to college. To help pay his way, he took a temp job doing things like accounting, payroll, and HR. But ultimately, he reached a dead end and needed something new to fuel him. At the same time, the war in Iraq was in full swing, and there were incentives to answer your nation's call and enlist. Robert saw an opportunity to become a leader and to grow, so he enlisted and headed to basic training. It wasn't long before his hard work paid off and he began to stand out among his peers. I just pushed myself to the ultimate limit. I had to work harder than everyone just to keep up. And that was just the pace I had set for my life. In the physical fitness challenge of the basic training, there's a test at the end and I beat the whole battalion. Robert made rank quickly. And after his first tour, he went to leadership school and earned the rank of sergeant before being sent off to his second tour in Iraq. It was there that a new idea and a new career path presented itself. One day, it's very hot, generators are out, power's out, and I have sensitive skin, and we won't get too graphic. When it gets hot, guys downstairs get hotter. So I had an uncomfortable situation going on, and I just had an idea. So what came from all of that discomfort? an innovative new design for men's underwear, which featured a separation pouch to help provide more comfort and cooling. But I didn't have the idea per se to invent something. I was like, there's gotta be underwear like that out there. I started searching immediately and I couldn't find anything. So if you can't find the, what you're looking for, you have to make it yourself. I wasn't trying to start a company. It hadn't occurred to me that that was even an option. I'm in the army, I still have four years. I planned on doing 20. So that was just 
the direction I was going. It's hard to change directions mid life. I got home and bought a sewing machine and altered all my existing underwear and was playing around with different cuts and sewing combinations. And I started making some for my friends and everyone I told, nobody ever said it was a bad idea. Robert had a few years left on his contract with the army and wasn't feeling much pressure to immediately expand his prototype into a full-blown company. It wasn't until Robert's younger brother pushed him to see that this idea could grow into something far beyond just a side hobby. He flew out, he was in San Antonio, flew out to where I was living here in Colorado and stayed with me. We started trying to come up with names and one of the names we came up with was Southern Comfort, which I thought was pretty clever. And junk drawers, but none of them hit. And so he left without us having a name but a couple of weeks or months later, he called me one day and I was in bed and I woke up, answered the phone. He didn't say anything. He was just like, sheath. And I was like, yes, it was perfect. After the break, Robert talks us through the founding of sheath, including the roadblocks he ran into again and again with manufacturers. Plus, he shares the big successes and big failures the company has had over the years in marketing its products. It takes a lot to grow a business, but one thing's for certain. You've got to have a laser focus on the customer. That's why we use Salesforce Essentials at Mission every day. With Essentials, your small business has access to the same CRM tools driving results for some of the most successful companies on earth. Think Adidas, Amazon, T-Mobile, Toyota, Intuit, Marriott, and tens of thousands more. Track your business health by measuring sales, emails, customer satisfaction, and custom metrics. Go to getessentials.com slash the journey to start your free 90-day trial today. Now that Robert had a fitting name for his company, Sheath, it was time to get to work on perfecting the design. He worked with a local seamstress to make a few prototypes to share with manufacturers. I remember calling manufacturers in the U.S. and telling them what I wanted and basically being laughed off the phone. Robert found a solution in a manufacturing website called MFG, which linked him to a manufacturer in Pakistan who was very friendly. He knew that Robert was a novice and offered to hold his hand through the process. He was awesome. The only reason we didn't stay with him ultimately was the power went out for like three months. So we lost contact, but he ultimately got us the product, which was amazing. And then the other problem was what I try to tell people not to do is to rush production. I was so excited to get it going. I should have gone through a few more prototypes, a few more samples, because you send them a sample, they send you back a sample and you send them corrections and then they'll send you back another one. I felt like I was asking too much to send it back one more time. So I was like, it's good enough. Go ahead and produce it. And ultimately they were unsellable because the pouch was too high. And so when I got it and I'm handing it out to people, they were just like, yeah, it's good. Because nobody wants to tell you what you don't want to hear. So you have to be honest with yourself. And it took a while for me to get the hint, even though I, you know, I'm wearing it and I'm like, yeah, it's good or whatever. I was lying to myself. Robert was crestfallen. He was left with a shipment of products he could not sell and no funds to reorder something he could sell. This was no minor setback. It took him three years to recover enough financially to try again. That third year is when I really started getting back into remaking the prototype and we're gonna do a relaunch. And thankfully during those years, Kickstarter was introduced and that's how we were able to fund the second production. We only asked for $8,000. We made 13,000, just enough to pay for the production. And that was a huge indicator of where we would be going as far as the concept. Again, we run into these roadblocks and even though it was successful and we actually got a successful production, it was so successful that we went to reorder more product. And I don't know why they even sent what they sent but the products were mangled, completely ridiculously unsellable. It was the ultimate deja vu. 
Here he was again with a whole shipment of products he could not sell, and he was once more out thousands of dollars. No one would have blamed Robert if he called it quits right then. But something kept him going. He knew this was more than a product. It was his calling. So he kept going until he finally caught a break. At this point, another manufacturer had reached out to us and asked if they could make us a sample of our product. And I was like, sure, why not? So I sent them what we had and what they sent back, they had improved it. They made it better. To help fund working with this new manufacturer, he ran another Kickstarter. And this time it was even more successful than the last one. Finally, things were looking up. They had the right design, the right manufacturer, and a flurry of eager customers ready to buy the product. They had what they needed to sell. Now it was time to get to work marketing the product line. For Robert, marketing is all about word of mouth. Every time a customer receives a product or interacts with the company, that's an opportunity to leave a lasting impression. For instance, let's say you go to order sheath and you order a medium, but you needed a large. We'll replace it immediately, no problem. And we might send you two pairs just to like give you that little wow factor like, oh my God, I made a mistake. I ordered the wrong thing. They not only corrected it, they doubled it. And customer service is huge because we already have the product. The product is gold, people love it. The next thing you want is to take care of these people and I treat them like they're the only one. And it's harder to do that as the bigger you get. Over the years, Sheath has sharpened its marketing campaigns and increased its conversion rate from two to 4%, which is twice the industry average. What's more, the company boasts a 30 to 40% return buyer rate. But getting to these enviable metrics hasn't been simple. Just like every part of Robert's journey, there were some hiccups along the way. I mentioned Gary Vaynerchuk earlier and we got kind of caught up in the hype of him and one of the daily V's, he said, if there's any small businesses out there, we're starting our Vayner Sports Agency, which is an offshoot of Vayner Media. So we're like, yeah, we're a small company. And they presented this opportunity, which I was naive at the time, but it was to be a VIP sponsor of the SB Awards in LA. And it was $15,000. It was like everything we had to pay that fee and then get some special shirts made. I flew my whole team out there and I, we couldn't even stay overnight. Like we flew out there, went to the party and flew back because I couldn't afford to like do lodging and everything. But like I get there, there's 15 other VIP special sponsors on this wall in the back corner. I don't have any more money because I just spent it all. Sheath was able to bounce back after that mistake. And today Robert reflects on it as a huge learning experience. There have been a few other marketing misfires over the years, but it's the handful of big wins that proves it's worthwhile to continue experimenting. Most recently, there's a style guru on YouTube and Instagram, and we paid 20 grand. This was gonna be our biggest expense ever to promote a YouTuber for one video, and it made like 80 grand. So it kind of made up for the losers, and it's still getting sales to this day. What's up next for Sheath? new and unique products like socks, undershirts, and soap. Robert is excited about these big plans for expanding the sheath product line, but for him, achieving real success means finding a balance between dedicating himself to a company and making time to live life to the fullest. It's always a personal growth journey. For me, I'm just continuing to develop myself as an individual, improve myself. Our growth rate is huge. If we get to 500 orders a day, then we might tweak some things around. Cause it's like, how big do you want to get? Like, how hard do you want to work? Do you want to enjoy life? There's gotta be balance. And so once we hit that point, we might have to start raising the prices, get them while they're cheap people. The road Robert has traveled to get where he is now has never been smooth. And there were times that were truly heartbreaking. But still, Robert thinks his younger self would be proud of how far he's come and all he's been through. I've made a lot of mistakes. So he might be disappointed at a couple of the decisions I made along the way, but overcome them. And I think he would be pretty pleased. If he's looking at me right now, he'd be like, maybe do something with your hair. <laughs> but, uh, I dig it. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to the journey. Steve Jobs once said, quote, sometimes when you innovate, you make mistakes. 
it is best to admit them quickly and get on with improving your other innovations. Or, Paul Dixon puts it this way, quote, No experiment is ever a complete failure. It can always be used as a bad example. Throughout Robert's life, he's tried one new thing after another. There was a purpose behind every idea and a drive that kept him going when all the odds were stacked against him. Things that seemed like wins initially turned into devastating blows. But the measure of an entrepreneur is how he or she faces challenges. The successful ones keep going, they keep innovating, and they learn from the losses to make them stronger and more ready for the big wins. Then they do it again. Succeeding as a startup, solo founder, or any small business is an uphill battle. It takes the right mindset and the right tools. That's why we're thrilled to partner with Salesforce Essentials to bring you the journey. Managing one podcast, let alone a whole media studio, is a challenge to say the least. But Essentials makes it easy to maintain relationships and grow our business. With Essentials, your startup has access to the same CRM driving insights and results for the most successful companies in the world. Use unrivaled Salesforce technology to track customers, sales, emails, and more. You'll know where your business is and where it's headed as you chart the path for your journey. We love using Essentials and we know you will too. Go to getessentials.com slash the journey to start your free 90-day trial today.